In keeping with sequel month, I give you one of the sequels I've gotten the most requests to review. The Secret of Nim 2. Timmy to the Rescue. By God have a lot of people told me to review this. Maybe because I've praised the first one as an anime classic and have even admitted to it being one of my favorite movies. The story about Mrs. Brisby and the rats of Nim was dark, dramatic, yet still had an element of wonder that makes it, what I consider, a masterpiece of animation. So as you can imagine, I'm not looking forward to this one. Just look at the cover. Mrs. Brisby isn't even on it. And who's the star now? Timmy. Timmy, that kid that just got one line in the first film. What the fuck has he ever done? Outside of... not... die. Well, let's see what the damage is. Let's dive right into... Secret of Nim 2. So the movie begins with the not-so-wise idea of showing us footage from the first film, making us realize how much we're gonna hate this one. They went through experiments. They'd become... intelligent. None of them would have survived were it not for the incredible bravery of that great mouse, Jonathan Brisby. We must leave no evidence that the rats of Nim ever existed. But Jonathan Brisby's widow and her family stayed behind. Oh, nice. Mrs. Brisby, after all the shit she's been through, gets the incredible honor of widow credit. Oh, she also did a few other things, but fuck it, they weren't important. The prophet Nicodemus predicted that Nim will again thrust its evil on the rats. And a son of Jonathan Brisby will be chosen to save them. Uh, no. No, he didn't. You just made that up. Insert immediate downgrade in animation, and we see where our current story begins. We see Timmy and his brother Martin riding each other's nuts until some evil scientists are following them. Fortunately, they give him the slip. Hero. <laughs> Don't call me that, Martin. You're the hero type. Oh, Nicodemus should have chosen you. For once, you're right. I'm older and stronger than you. If Thorn Valley wanted Jonathan Brisby's son, why'd they pick the runt? Wait a minute, why is it suddenly Timmy who's picked to be the chosen one? Jonathan had two sons? That made a prophecy you just pulled out of your ass didn't say anything about Timmy being the hero. So why doesn't Martin have a shot? Fire! Oh. <laughs> I know you're trying, but remember, some try, Brisby's do. There is no try. So we see the rest of the family all grown up, including Mrs. Brisby, who I guess became nearsighted in between movies. But Mom, I don't want to go. Timmy, we all know what your father meant to the rats of Thorn Valley. He helped them get away from Nim. Pop was a real hero. That's right. And? I know, and they want me to be like him, but... But nothing. Boy, no pressure on this kid. They just gave him a direct order to be exactly like your father, the great hero. God, do you think Jesus' parents acted that way? Now, Jesus, you know your mother and I are very, very proud of you. But if it's at all possible, do you mind dying for our sins? Just asking, just asking. So, it's sort of hard to understand, but I guess Timmy is being sent to the rats to train in their ways and become a stronger person. You know, just leaving the rest of the kids to waste their non-prophesied lives away. Of course you're welcome to Thorn Valley! There's plenty of education for every- Oh, You're not a messiah, are ya? Yeah, public school's right down the street. And for that matter, I thought the rats left Thorn Valley. That doesn't look like a thorn bush, it looks more like a tree. What, do they not want to change all their business cards? So Jeremy finally drops Timmy off at the valley. Well, good. Maybe here they'll finally treat him like a normal pra- Ow. Oh, really? You wanna relax? Then take what you please. There's candy galore and it's all made of cheese. You wanna play ball? Better better swing! You wanna play loud? You could be number one. Ah, gee, so you're gonna treat him like a god, too? You're doing the red carpet? You're throwing a parade? You know, I'm sorry, I'm still gonna dwell on this. You do not treat your child this way, especially if he hasn't done anything yet. It applies a ton of pressure and stress that could scar the little brat for life. It's basic psychology 101. His family shouldn't be doing it, and his school shouldn't be doing it either. Now I know what you're thinking. Hogwarts acted that way with Harry Potter, treating him like a child prodigy. Well, folks, maybe Hogwarts isn't that great at school. Wake up. What's the child fatality rate up to again? Hell, they drown half of their students just for their equivalent of water polo! I wouldn't trust them! Oh, by the way, how's the hairy kid turning out anyway? I thought so. So after meeting Mr. Ages and Justin, who is voiced by William H. Macy for some reason, Thorn Valley teaches Timothy all about their science and technology. You know, Timmy, when your father saved the rats of Nim, he didn't know that was his destiny. 
But I'm not my father. Well, let's let history be the judge of that, shall we? I get the feeling that history is going to say, you are your father, whether you like it or not. But Justin, I don't feel that. So literally, the next 20 minutes or so is just building up what a fucking godsend Timmy is going to be. You've got to be ready mentally and physically. <laughs> ready for what? To fulfill your destiny. Everyone keeps saying that, but I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Right now, nobody does, Timmy. You've got to adapt and improvise. It really is incredible. Nothing about this kid indicates that he has great intelligence or great leadership skills. Oh, I'm sorry, except for the great prophecy. Okay, Nicodemus was a wise soul and could predict a lot of things that were going to happen. But you know what? He sure couldn't predict when a fucking brick was gonna fall on him and crush him into a nick of pancake. So I think that means he can make a mistake every once in a while. No, too much. So Timmy shows off some of his new skills by setting traps for dangerous wildlife. <laughs> and don't come back! That old snake won't be hunting us for breakfast anymore. Well, at least I know what happened to the weather balloon I asked you to get for me. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just trying to help make the valley safe. The valley is safe enough. Oh yeah, except of course for that fucking snake! What have I been trying to teach you all these months? Um... That it's okay for guys to wear the same underwear three days in a row? <laughs> well, that was just between us. They're not even wearing pants. So Mr. Ages explains why Timmy's snake experiment isn't as good as he thinks it should be. If snakes go flying through the air, humans might find out about Thorn Valley. And then we might be in real danger. From who? From Nim. What's Nim? Let's hope you never find out. Wait a minute, he doesn't even know what Nim is? What are they telling this kid? Well, who did Jonathan save the rats from then, the Nazis? Always see the big picture. I'll never be you. Never live up to the deeds that you did. Why don't I have you? Oh great, now we can add Can Sing to his resume. You know, if he was to apply to any other fancy school, he'd be thrown out in a millisecond. So, what makes you think you're Harvard material? Well, I can't do anything, haven't done anything, don't plan on doing anything, but this dead guy says that I'm the Messiah. Oh, and I can't sing either. You used to be there, didn't you? But, but, but now you're not. So Timmy grows up into a teenager played by the karate kid himself, Ralph Macchio. And guess what? He can't sing either. And they'll tell our story. They'll know what we've done. Key on, key off. Key on, key off. So, after all his training, on their very first adventure to obtain food, what does little Timmy end up doing? They give him a whistle to blow in case he spots trouble. Uh, bullshit! All everybody ever tells him is he's a hero, he's a chosen one! Now you're telling him his destiny is to be a whistleblower? What the fuck kind of mixed messages are you trying to tell this kid? No, too much. But he comes across another mouse named Jenny, who it turns out actually escaped from him. Tim, you left your post. You put us all in danger. But I... You've got to learn to listen. You always think you know better than everyone else. Gee! I wonder where he got that idea! Maybe it was the fucking parade proclaiming that he knows better than everyone else! No, too much. So Jenny explains how her parents are being held at Nim and how the experiments are getting more and more out of control, mostly being run by a crazy scientist named Valentine. Dr. Valentine is crazier than ever. My parents and the others sent me to find you. So this must be the rescue the movie was talking about. Well, great. When do we get going? I'm afraid you ask too much of us, Miss McBride. Why? The council decided that the risk to Thorn Valley was just too great. But, but Thorn Valley isn't going, so what the fuck are you talking about? The answer's no, isn't it? Ma'am, I answered your question. I answered the darn... I'm cooperating here, and there, uh, there's no... Uh, we're doing all we can. I guess I'm going to have to do it myself. I'm not going to let anything happen to my mother and father, and that's that. I can't let you leave. Oh, wait a minute. Now they're holding her against her will? Good night, children. Sorry to keep you a prisoner. What the hell? When did the rats of Nim become a hostage cult? How'd you know about Thorn Valley? When I was little, 
I remember a mouse in the cage next to ours telling my parents how the rats that escaped from Nim had settled in a place called Thorn Valley. I remember him saying it was south by south by south. Martin said that. How did you know? My mom's letter said he disappeared. She had no idea what happened to him. Wait, 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 wait. Letter? What letter? We never saw a letter. Martin's missing? When did that happen? She said this happened when she was little. Martin's been gone that long? How come it doesn't affect Timmy? Your fucking brother's gone and all you do is stuff your face and sing off key? What the fuck's wrong with you? This is our savior? He doesn't even give a shit when his own flesh and blood disappears. How would you react if the rats of Nim ever got abducted? Timmy, quick, Justin's been captured! Oh, okay then. Oh my god, it, wait, no. Oh my god, Justin's been captured? I have to do something! The... So Timmy, after just a mere couple of years after hearing the news, finally goes to save his brother along with Jenny, who's off to save her parents. But a nasty hawk bursts their bubble and they plummet to the ground. They come across a caterpillar who says he can lead them to the Great Owl, which it turns out is not the Great Owl, but actually Jeremy, posing as the Great Owl. Now, if you even care an inkling about the first film at all, you're probably asking, why? Well, it's so Jeremy and the caterpillar can scam people out of money by charging them for asking questions. Hey, uh, here's a question, Mr. Owl. Um, what the fuck do animals need with money? You're, you know, animals. <laughs> <laughs> you wig! Oh, I see. Wait. Get in the so just to recap, everybody, Jeremy's a criminal, Justin and Mr. H's are kidnappers, and Timmy doesn't even bat an eye as his brother is being tortured for several years. Sheesh, and I thought the first film was dark. This is downright diabolical. There it is. So Jeremy finally flies Timmy and Jenny to Nim, and it turns out Justin and Mr. H's have a change of heart and decide to join them as well. And I have to be honest, as we near the third act of this film, I'm not seeing the spectacular badness it's supposed to have. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's bad, but it's just sort of basic, dumb sequel bad. I mean, nothing really propels it into incredibly awful. Jenny, look! What happened to him? He's turned the humans into dogs! Okay, so the evil scientist is turning the other scientists into dogs? Why would he do that? And he's turning rats into bodyguards? What exactly is this guy's evil plan? How you have grown. I suppose I have changed a bit. But for the better, don't you think? Hero? Martin! What? It's me, the new and improved Marty. And I made the most of it. What? Martin is the bad guy? Martin? I was far too smart from the very start. And he has the voice of Eric Idle? I began to grow. Little did he know. And he sings? I had my own plans for him. He thought I was tame. And he's the one who turned the scientists into dogs? And, 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 and. They all do as I say. No one stands in my way. Everybody here is happy, or I have them slightly altered. I can do as I please. I can change things with ease. Horns or hair or fin or feather. I control the wind and weather. We can rule the world together. If you come with me, you'll be happy. Oh, so happy when you come with me. You'll be king of everything of all that you can see. <laughs> Just say yes, Hero. No. Think what we two can do, you and me, me and you. Buck yourself up, don't look so stupid. Dumb! In my master plan. This is dumb! Tell me I'm it can't be for real! It can't be! No movie could possibly be this stupid! It has to be a dream sequence or... What the hell am I even looking at? It's like Candyland if it was designed by Charles Manson! Somebody else took over this movie! In the same asylum, probably! You'll be happy, nice and happy, if you just say yes! I'm at a loss for words. I mean, 
This has got to be the freaking dumbest twist I've ever seen in my life! I mean, the mouse is a mad scientist? What sick, twisted brain would come up with something so stupid? And then the mouse turns into a mad scientist and betrays all his friends. Genius! This is a work of genius! <laughs> consultant and see what he thinks. Wonderful! So the mouse becomes the mad scientist. It's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Oh, you've really outdone yourself this time in Say No. I know! Now, every child in the world will know they can never escape the clutches of science! <laughs> <laughs> You know what this is like? I. Oh no, 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 I can't even make the comparison. I can't, it's too stupid to make. But it's true, it's so true. The Secret of Nim, this wonderful creative film, has officially become about a mouse with scientific abilities trying to take over the world. You know where this is going! <laughs> Gee, Martin, what are we gonna do tonight? The same thing we do every night, stupid! Try to take over the world! The Timmy and the Brain, yes, Timmy and the Brain. One is a genius and also insane. To take over the world, they'll portray the sequel. They're with me, the Timmy and the Brain, 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 Brain. Yes! So... After whatever the hell we just witnessed, Martin locks up Timmy and tells Jenny that he's going to take over Thorn Valley and make her his queen. Why? Because the movie was written by monkeys. So Timmy manages to get out of his cage and goes to stop his brother and save everybody. Stand still, will you? So when you get down to it, the actual secret of Nim in this movie was a totally insane mouse who had the voice of Eric Idle. I have to admit, that was a pretty well-kept secret. I, I never would have guessed that. <laughs> so how does he defeat this diabolical genius? He throws the book at him. Yeah, that's for being so evil. Weak. They help everybody escape, but the place catches fire, and Timmy wants to go in to save Martin. Tim! Where are you going? I'm doing what you said. I'm following my heart. I love you. Woo! I love you too! Boy, they said that pretty fast, didn't they? They must not have had a lot of time to get through all the cliches. Oh, and uh, practice makes perfect, don't do drugs, and uh, there's no place like home. Bye! He finds Martin and manages to get him out of there before the place burns up. They get back to Thorn Valley and everybody throws a big parade for him. Oh, by the way, Timmy and Jenny are in love. If you think that's a cliff note in my review, don't. It's a cliff note in the movie too. And it also turns out that Martin's back to normal. How? Because they put a bandage on his head. And in old kids' movies, that seems to fix everything. You could be dying of cancer and a fucking bandage on your head would fix it. You single-handedly saved Thorn Valley. Martin is correct, Timothy. The prophecy of Nicodemus came true. You have indeed fulfilled your destiny. So let me get this straight. Timmy's great destiny was to stop a jealous mastermind who would have been a jealous mastermind unless he heard that Timmy had a great destiny. In other words, if they didn't fucking build him up, none of this would have happened. Talk about a self-fulfilling prophecy, you dumbasses! Folks, what can I say? Well, how about this? It's awful! Incredibly, incredibly awful! I mean, it starts off bad. Bad sequel bad. And then it just spirals into a world of absolute insanity. The choices they made to go with this story are just mind-boggling. I still can't comprehend it. The only thing that's remotely entertaining about this film is Eric Idle doing the voice of Martin. But even then, that's just because he's so batshit insane that it's sort of hard not to laugh at it. There's still the fact that Martin's the bad guy. There's still the fact that they build up this kid who's literally done nothing. There's the fact of that stupid self-fulfilling prophecy. There's the fact that Mrs. Brisby is barely in it, or the rest of the family for that matter. It's just... And so terrible! And I'm not gonna stand for it! Something has to be done! Do it! 
and ready. You may fire when ready. I'm the Nostalgia Critic and sequel month is almost over. Just one more movie. I don't even care what the hell it is. Did someone say care? Ah! Who's that coming from somewhere up in the sky? Moving fast and bright as a firefly. Through that careless countdown and send a wish out through the air. Pay for that one day. <laughs> <laughs>